Hello, and welcome to my tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you tips and tricks that I use to make this track and that you're listening to now. I'm going to go through some sequencing, where to find loop melodies and mixing and effect techniques. I hope you enjoy. Here you can hear a loop being played that I've simply grabbed from a website called Looperman. It's completely free and anyone can use it. I browsed and found one I liked and put it into the application that I use. And from there I can do whatever I want to it. For example, I can add effects, I can slow it down, I can speed it up or I can reverse it. In this example, I've added an effect called gross beat, which I'll talk to you more about later. And that gives a certain effect to it, which makes my intro and my hook. Here I'm gonna show you how I made the intro. I click the top left button and I click make unique which makes it into a separate loop meaning I can do any effect to it and it won't affect the original loop. So now I can double click it. I can click on the effects which puts it assigns it to a mixer channel. If I put number two on the mixer channel here it will go to number two. So now on the right hand side I can click whatever effect I want and I, this time I click gross beat because it has a certain effect called half speed which I'm going to go to now and it gives an effect and it slows it down to half the speed and it's a really cool intro to trick it's very simple and you can use it via intro i'm going to put that twice so i'm going to click on the one that i need and i'm going to go up to my pencil tool and i'm going to click it in and that will play twice now and then it will go to my normal loop and it will play normally now i'm going to go to my step sequencer and assign the drums to where I, where I need them to be. As you can see, I've, I've muted everything else apart from my kick and it will play wherever I click it in. So if I click it in to a random place, which I'm going to do now, you hear it then, it played wherever I click it. So I click it into wherever I want, wherever it sounds good, and it will play there. Then I go to my clap and I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to listen to where it sounds good, where I think it will sound good. And this is muted actually, so I'm going to unmute it now. So my clap will play wherever I click it in. So I'm going to click it in once every four bars, just to keep it simple. And then I'm going to go to my snare and add it in wherever there's a gap. So I think there will be good. That's muted again actually. Let me unmute that. There we go. So it's going to play in the gaps. It's just little fillers that make the track good. And the background sounds are one of the most important sounds that you can have in a track. The background sounds make it more full. So the smaller sounds that you don't necessarily hear are the most important ones in the track. So like this open hat for example, it's like a sizzling sound in the background, but if it wasn't there you would notice. Here's my hi-hat pattern. This is a pretty complicated pattern and again like the kick, wherever I click, that's where it'll play. It's muted at the moment so you can't hear it right now, but I'm going to unmute it now. It's 
it's a pretty complex pattern and I'm going to explain how I did it now. So I clicked it in wherever I needed it and I used musical knowledge to know where to put the rolls and stuff. The rolls is where it goes really fast in some places. And this is my velocity. So velocity means the volume. So if I put it all the way up here, it's going to play really loud here when I play it. You hear that? It's really loud there. So I put it gradually going up, quite quiet, quieter than the rest of them. And it will feel like it's gradually going up. And I did that for a lot because, so it doesn't sound robotic, so it has that human feel to it. And this is the panning. Panning means when it goes from left to right headphone or left to right. And um, so if it goes up, it means it's going to the left. And if it goes down, it means it's going to the right. So I've done that so it switches, so it doesn't feel so robotic and gives that human feel to it. And now I'm gonna go to some more background sounds. And background sounds, as I said, they're very important. So the more you can get in without it feeling too crowded, the better. Okay, so now I'm gonna work on the outro. I'm gonna do a very simple outro, very common. It's just gonna fade out on the track. I'm sure you all, you've all heard it in the music you listen to. So I'm going to go to the mixer channel, I'm going to go to the master, the master is the overall volume. I'm going to right click and create an automation clip. This controls the volume throughout the whole track. The line here is the volume that it should be at. And at the end I'm going to fade it there. So it's going to go down in a slope. So at the end it will start to go quieter, you'll hear it now. It will start to fade out and it will go quieter and quieter and quieter until it eventually stops. Okay, it started playing there, and that was just because it looped to the start of the song, but if I had it faded out properly, then it would just go to complete silence. These are all my mixer channels. All the mixers, all the little, like, faders, they control the volume, and that's this number is how I get them to them volumes. So if I wanted to put the kick at number three, I put it to number three and adjust the fader. Same with the clap, I put it to number six, and that'll be at number six. Now I control the volume by this little fader there. Same with the gross melody, which I put the gross beat on, and it made that kind of cool sound and this is my EQ so this cuts out frequencies and high or low frequencies that I don't want for example a hi-hat quite a high pitch sound so I cut the low frequency out because I don't need them same with the open hat the sizzling sound and the clap it's kind of a middle so and the snare 